Hi, and welcome to this week's meeting of the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Rotary is a global organization of 1.2 million members trying to make a difference around the world. We here at the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley are one of about 36,000 clubs. And each week we connect with and hear from fascinating and inspirational speakers, often with a message focused on our interest in innovation, ed education and entrepreneurship. As a Rotary Club, we look to engage these speakers to find ways and programs and to foster new approaches and exploring how technology can serve the business of service to others. We're glad that you've joined us and we hope that you will enjoy this program as we hear from our Charter President, Rushton Hurley, talking about creative solutions for the global good. Over to you, Rushton. Thank you very much, Brett. Uh, so, so before I get started, several different things that I, that I wanna point out to the group. Uh, one, so much fun to have uh, as, as many different continents represented as we do when, when we get to the, uh, the introduction stage, we'll, we'll, handle, we'll handle that piece. Uh, but also our club secretary, Nick, became a father again, in just mere days ago. And so Nick, uh, the, the whole club is like, woo, all right, happy, happy baby uh, uh, Nicolina. Actually, her name is not Nicolina. It's Amelia, but uh, it, it is wildly cool for, for her to have joined the world. So with that, I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about programs in the club and creative solutions for the global good. So we, we get these speakers to come and talk to us. Hey, you know, this is what I've got going on in the world. There is this thing, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully it's interesting to people, inspiring perhaps, things like that. Um, but another set of speakers that we haven't had enough of lately, hint, hint, uh, is, is talks from our own members talking about what they do or what they've been up to. Uh, and so today is also an opportunity to kind of get a template for that kind of thing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work I have been doing lately, or one of the things I've been doing lately that I hope will be very interesting to you. So, so with regard to that, I'm going to talk about a class that I co-teach, and the class is called Creative Solutions for the Global Good, which I believe uh, just kind of you know, goes, goes right in line with who we are as Rotarians. I am, I am one of those people that when I present, I'll, I'll put in a little reminder that I should have like captions on because why shouldn't we have captions on just to be inclusive and cool and that kind of thing. Can I get a quick uh, verbal message from uh, Brett or anybody? Do you see my slide just fine or is there like a, a a rectangle in the top area at all. I get that rectangle. You do. There as well. Yeah. All right, we will do that then. How about that? Yeah, uh, there, there are certain mysteries in the world. You know, why, why is there violence in the world? Why, why, uh, why do those rectangles appear? You, you get the idea. So, so at any rate, now that we've passed that mystery, let's talk a little bit about creative solutions for the global good and what Rush has been up to, which includes a certain amount of presenting because we've kind of hit conference season and, and the first half of the year is often a time where I'm doing a lot of talking at conferences about ideas related to education and technology and education and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I always use images that I have the legal right to use and uh, for which I provide a citation. And I claim a woohoo on that front. Uh, when I present these ideas to a Rotary Club, I tell them a little bit about our club and how we are an online, asynchronous, weekly, fellowship-loving, service-oriented, actual Rotary Club. Now, that was actually kind of a big thing for people to understand up till about two years ago when all of a sudden everybody's an online club for at least some period of time. Perhaps the most interesting piece for those of you who are like, hey, I'm not a member of your club. Tell me more about this thing, is the asynchronous part. So there are lots of clubs that meet online and they get together at the same time and they talk to each other. And that's wonderful. I think of the Rotary Club of Innovation, formerly the Rotary e Club of, e of East Anglia uh, in England and all our buddies over there, right? And, and the, the wonderful club that they have where they meet synchronously, but we meet asynchronously, largely because our members are crazy busy, but have a heart for service. And this is one way that they can find a, a seat at the Rotary table. Who am I? I am a former high school teacher. I taught Japanese language for years. I was, I'm a former principal. I was principal of a K-12 school and then an online high school in the early O's, a very different time for the internet. And then in 2005, I started a company called Next Vista for Learning. And it's a little nonprofit save the world thing and I still run it. And it just seems to somehow survive despite uh, my lack of 
of, of business experience uh, on, on other fronts. So, so there you go. Part of the way it survives is through the connections I have with, uh, with schools and conferences and districts and programs around the world, blah, blah. The school that I spend the most time at is a school up in San Mateo, California called Junipero Serra High School. It's a boys Catholic school, uh, boys Catholic high school. Uh, nothing quite like what I experienced growing up, but, but a very interesting crowd and interesting for a lot of reasons. And one of the cool things about it is that I get to co-teach a class there called Creative Solutions for the Global Good. I want to tell you about this class because I think it's fun and cool and interesting, and you'll see how it overlaps with, with the things that you might know about me with regard to my rotary work, which if you're in our club and you watch our programs, you'll know, and if not, nice to meet you. So there are three big elements to this class, and one of them is the presence of lots and lots of really cool stories. So, so very short videos that are designed to be inspirational and cool. You might say, wait a minute, actually in our club, we have like a, an inspirational video every week. Who puts that up there? That would be me. And so the, the overlap there is, is not accidental, right? You know, the, the ability to kind of get something out to teachers to say, hey, here's a wonderful prompt for students or things like that. And, and share ideas along that front is something, something that I do. And so what, what, I, what I often explain when I'm in a, a setting with teachers about this class is that these, these, these stories are important. And, and I think all of these have been featured on our, in our club in one way or another, right? So upper left is uh, Global Himalayan Expeditions. If you, if you didn't see that particular program, this is a group that was like, hey, there are all of these villages in, in, in mountainous parts of India, especially the Ladakh region, where they don't have electricity. And, they, and it would be so good if they could like ditch their kerosene stoves in favor of a small uh, solar microgrid. But they don't have the money to like put that kind of thing in. Ah, oh, but wait, there are these people who travel in order to trek in the mountains. People from all over the world would want to trek in these amazing mountains in, in this area. And what if we had them fund putting these things in place and allowed them to be part of the experience of going to these villages and helping them electrify and the stories are amazing, right? That's cool. That's finding two different things and bringing them together in an innovative way. That's really cool. The upper right, that's a house. So it's a 3D printed house. It's actually the first permitted 3D printed house in, in the United States. And it's, it's in Austin, Texas. And if you missed our, our program with uh, Icon and News Story talking about their goal, which is to end global homelessness, not thinking small, uh, then, then you, know, you get it. Wow, that's really cool that people do that kind of thing. In the lower left, uh, you see the, you know, like a winning smile on a kiddo, right? And you're like, hey, that's awesome. She's dressed up as what? Wonder Woman. Yeah. And she's in something. Oh, it's the invisible plane. That's cool. It's cooler than that. She's in a wheelchair and, and the organization Magic Wheelchair essentially gets people to, to work together to build wildly cool additions to wheelchairs as a part of costumes so that kids can have these amazingly cool experiences that way, which, which is Pretty, pretty phenomenally cool, right? And in the lower right, Manu Prakash, professor at, at Stanford, who was visiting a, a clinic in, uh, in a developing country where, where he really learned that he's like, you know, it's really important in a clinic to have something like a, a centrifuge so that if you get a blood sample, you can spin it real fast and separate out the components of the blood. But there's a problem. Matter of fact, three problems. They're expensive, they're really heavy, and they require electricity. So he goes back to his students in, at Stanford, his team, engineering team, and says, we need to come up with a centrifuge that requires no electricity, is light enough to fold up and put in your pocket, and costs less than a dollar so it can scale up. Again, not thinking small, right? And, and so what happened was they, they used the whirly gig to create effectively something that with very small vials can, can reach the, the, the rotations necessary to be able to separate out the components of the blood, which is important for any number of medical uses. Those kinds of ideas and stories are important for students to begin thinking outside the box because so many students are in a space where they're like, what do you want me to do? What do I need to do to get the grade? Uh, right, and that's, that's just not inspiring. So, so one element is, is this thing of, okay, let's, let's make sure that there are stories there that have them thinking at different levels. Another way we have them think at different levels is by connecting them with people around the world. You're like, where is that? That's, that's Table Mountain uh, near Cape Town, South Africa. And there's a school in Cape Town called Parklands College. And a former member of our club, Richard Nags, um, is, is a guy who works there and uh, is a good friend. And, and my students and his students or students at his school will connect and share ideas and things like that. And that's, 
that's kind of fun as well. We get speakers from all over the world talking to these kids because it's just Zoom. As long as someone has time and like a good internet connection, why not? So that's another thing that I talk about with regard to this class. And then there's the project. So are there tests in this class? No. Papers? No. But there's one big project. They have homework, right? But most of that is, is, is think about cool stuff and show progress with the project. And so, so Matt's project, for example, was this, this, I could go on and on about his project, but it was designed to, to be like, okay, how do you get senior citizens who are isolated and lonely due to COVID, uh, how do you get them the kinds of equipment they need to be able to connect with people in, in different places? And, and he and a buddy began you know, taking in uh, donated laptops from their community and refurbishing them so they were Zoom ready and getting them in the hands of these senior citizens. And, and, and the full story is one of those things that's like, ah, the young people are good, right? You know, things like that. Um, so, so at the end of the year, what we do is we say, hey, we're going to have people present about their ideas. And that used to be a thing where we'd get them together in a room with, uh, you know, with some parents and administrators, and we'd be like, all right, you know, here are some breakfast burritos. Guys, tell us about your projects. Now we do it via Zoom. And last May, we had a, about 100 people, a little more, from 15 different countries, including a number of our members. Thank you, guys. Right, join in and hear the stories of, of these kids uh, at our school and the school in South Africa talk about the cool work they're doing. So, so that idea that you can really expand the audience of, of kids' work to, to a global one where they're beginning to say, oh, you know, I mean, like my ideas, my ideas can make a difference in other places is an important one. And that's, that's this, this central element of what the, uh, the class is about. So I work with teachers to try to get them to launch similar things, get it launched, right? Similar things at their schools, because why shouldn't they? This, this kind of stuff is good. It inspires kids. And we have these resources out there that are designed to help do these kinds of things. Uh, similar to our weekly inspirational video is a thing I put out called the NVIV, Next Vista. That's my company, inspiring video, nextvista.org slash NVIV. And you can find every week, right? There, there's a you know, there's a cool video and, and prompting questions, hopefully not the obvious questions that are designed to spark discussion or, or serve as a basis for a little bit of writing. That's me. That's me and, and, my, and my thoughts and kind of what I've been going, you know, doing a, a whole lot of lately. And, and I, want, I just want everybody to know, right, that, that as you think about the different things you do, the stories of what you do, are, are the kinds of stories that may not feel like they're all that amazing to you. Oh, okay, so I go teach this class. But the chances are really good that something about your work is the kind of thing that can get another person with a heart to, for service, which happens in our club a lot and in any Rotary Club, to say, hey, I, I really like that idea. Could you tell me more about it? I could use that in this way, right? We have to be in that frame of mind that essentially says, the stuff we do can inspire others. And so with that, I will hand it over to, to Raj Bandari, all right, one of, the, one of the members of the amazing programs committee for the Rotary Eco of Silicon Valley to handle Q&A. Uh, Raj, do you want me to do kind of introductions of the group before, before we jump into that? Or do you yes. want to Okay, yeah. So first of all, our, 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 I believe we've got one non-member guest and we are so jazzed to have her. A big aloha to Melissa in Hawaii. All right, thank you for being here, all right? Uh, in Europe, uh, Alexandra, our, our uh, membership chair, cool to have you here as well. Uh, I'm just going across the screen as I see it. Our paella master with the appropriate background, Stephen Shags Chagrin. Shags, good to see you, sir. Uh, our, our treasurer and, uh, and a, a longtime uh, Rotarian guru coolness person, that would be Cecilia, all right, currently in Palm Springs, way to go, all right? Uh, Raj, who is a member of the committee and, uh, and, and just, just one, of the, one, one of the more entertaining people I know, frankly. All right, so there we go. Uh, representing the great state of Texas in Houston is retired Judge Rory Olson. Rory, good to see you, my friend. And right there, Texas, right? Uh, representing Canada is, is Nick, our, our club secretary, and, uh, and the guy I know will always be at a, at a programs committee meeting uh, and do love you for that. And of course, in Sydney, Australia, where it is tomorrow, uh, that would be Brett Sham, uh, our president. And so Brett, thank you for, for joining in on that. Raj, I hand it over to you. Thanks, Rashton. Terrific presentation. We really enjoy you kicking off these presentations from our members. Um, love to see more of these in the future, but I think you've done a great job of showing us the way. 
Um, we'll start with questions um, from this international audience. Um, feel free to list your question in the chat or just say, I have a question and then we can uh, hand off the mic to you. Um, I actually have a question to start things. You'd mentioned that uh, there's uh, these projects. I don't know if it was just Phoenix project titled for just Matthews, but those sound phenomenal. Could you talk a little bit about how you scope those? Is it um, how long is the class and how much of the time is spent thinking about the idea and how much is executing and how, do, how are they rightly shaped so that they can get done alongside a rigorous schedule? <laughs> what, what a perfectly appropriate question for an educator. Um, yes, uh, it, it takes, it seems forever for the students to actually zero in on the project, or at least it feels that way to me. And, and Rita Lee, my co-teacher and, uh, and, and partner in, in educational, uh, crime's not the word, but you know. Um, and, and so, so the kids, you know, we don't tell them what to do, right? You know, I, what are you interested in? What, what have you been involved in? What, what, tell me more about that. Effectively, our role as teachers is to do a whole lot of question asking. How might that work? Who would you need to talk to? Do you know how to reach out to someone? You know, like, do you know how to write a letter along those lines? How do you track something like that? So uh, at the moment, for example, we've got, we got nine guys in, in the class. And, and so one of them is doing a project uh, in which he, uh, you know, he's uh, doing kind of a thing related to mentoring kids with chess. Uh, I've got an, another kid in the class who uh, meets with, uh, with kids at, a, at an elementary school in uh, just outside of Manila in the Philippines uh, every every two or three weeks or so and, and we'll, we'll get people to kind of come in and, and, and talk to them and help them with their, with their English which is phenomenal by the way all, all you kiddos at Jacinto Zamora Elementary in Manila you guys are awesome um, we've got a, a guy who's working on uh, telling the stories of, of other students uh, you know recording them telling stories in a way that might inspire other students to think a little more outside the box got a couple of guys who are working on a uh, building a website that is designed to help more students find uh, community service opportunities that are inspiring to them, you know, so that community service isn't just a, hey, uh, you know, how many hours did, were, were you volunteering at this place kind of thing. Uh, got, got a guy who, uh, who uh, collected a bunch of stuff to share with a school in Egypt, ran into the problem of, of getting, uh, getting like board approval for this, this, and this in, in ways that, that couldn't overcome. Uh, and now is actually combined with a guy who's working with, with the school in the Philippines on ways that we might be able to get the stuff that he's collected to the school in the Philippines, right? And so, so for, for, these, for these guys, a lot of their work, and I say guys because it's a boys school, right? Um, a lot of their work comes down to how do I deal with the challenges that pop up? And, and Rita and I mostly just ask questions. What, what about this? How about that? What do you think? Could, could this work? You know, how, what, what's your next step? Uh, and we meet once a week. Um, it often takes them like over the course of the school year, two to three months to really zero in on their, their project and, and get something going. And it just seems like it, it's uh, glacially slow, or at least us, uh, as, as we get started. But, you know, by the time we get to the, uh, the presentations, stuff has happened. And then it's a matter of helping them learn to tell the stories of, of the stuff as well. Great, thank you. So Celia, we have a question from you in the chat. Would you like me to read it out or would you like to read it? Would like me to read it out? Okay, this is from Cecilia. She asks, how can we engage with teachers to initiate project ideas? We all have um, either no teachers or have children or grandchildren in schools. Yeah, so, so that, that's important, right? Because for a lot of teachers, there, there is a sense of, I can barely get through what I'm supposed to do as it is, right? You know, you know society, at least our society and, and most societies I've encountered, put, put all kinds of demands on their schools. You need to be handling this, that, the other thing. You know, they're, they're social service agencies, they're everything. You know, they're, they're feeding kids. I mean, just, it, it, it's, it, it's not just teach them to add and write, right? So, so, the question becomes, how does, how does doing projects for which there are no easy answers as to what's supposed to happen, how does that overlap well with, with other expectations that may already be on the teacher's place? So does it have to do with, with getting kids to uh, communicate you know, better as, as a goal of the school, to uh, be engaged in their communities, to be good citizens? You know what I mean? So, so there, it, it's often a matter of finding what it is 
that is already a challenge for them and, and then making that a part of it as we go as well. Great, thanks. Brett, did you have a question? Yep, thanks Raj. Um, my question was along the lines of, with these children, what makes them different or, 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 or how is it that they get so inspired to around service and volunteering. You know, I think we hear more and more that young people these days are, you know, as they're, they're more focused on the internet and, and being a bit more insular, I think, and not getting as engaged in the community as, as generations past. Um, I was wondering, is it because it's a, it's a Catholic school and, you know, um, there is sort of that element of service in, in Catholicism or is it um, something else that's inspiring them to, 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 to find that passion to, to serve? Cool. Um, so, so without a doubt, I mean, Catholic schools are places where service is is an ingrained piece. A um, lot, lot of a lot of religious schools are going to be in that space. Um, but, but many, many schools. Period. Just you know, kind of traditional public schools, uh, public charter schools, independent schools also value service in, in in how they present themselves at some level. So, so then it's a matter of like, well. Well, how do we get kids inspired around that? So this is actually the, the important question. How does it become something more than just a requirement? So in, in this class, Creative Solutions for the Global Good, we believe that the stories that, that you also see via the inspiring videos, right? And, uh, and the, the connections to interesting people are the kinds of things that get them in that, that frame of mind that has them inspired. Like one of the one of the coolest, uh, like we've had, we've had so many cool speakers, right? Um, join and and talk to the kids, but that includes folks who've talked to our club, right? And that's that's just kind of an overlapping piece in my life. In my life, we we have some amazing speakers for the club, and I'm thinking this person would be good for the for the kids. I'll be like, you want to talk to some students, and and why not, right? Uh, so you know, I think of uh, Leo Johnson in Canada and his Empowerment Squared uh, project, uh, building the first uh, learning and library. Uh, center in, in post-Civil War Liberia, right? You know, I mean, I'm thinking of Nate Salpeter and Sweet Farm, the animal sanctuary that, that did the goat to meeting project uh, and, and, and the list goes on and on, right? Uh, and and so, so getting them in front of stories and having a lot of those stories sink in, I think puts them in a, in a frame of mind where they begin to think that, that it's not just about what you're required to do. And there are interesting ways that people approach it. And at some point, you know, they, they start going, huh, right? So, so just a few weeks back, uh, we had a, a, a program from uh, the, the people of the Lefkowski Foundation here in the club, right? Uh, who did the Ving Project, you know, about, you know, kids finding people who might need a thousand dollars, right? You know, and the foundation will help them give it to them. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, wow. And you know, we, that was a story that we shared with, with the guys in, in, uh, in my class. And, and one of the guys actually put in a proposal. It was funded. It was this thing where his, his grandmother's friend, right, had, had come over from Egypt uh, and had always been like this extra person in the family, right, to them. It was so good to them and good to others, but she'd had a lot of trouble, you know, with this and this and this and just had it hard. And he was like, you know, if I could, if I could just give her some small portion of what she's given me and my sister, like that would be wonderful. So anyway, I mean, you know, the, the Ving people are like, well, all right, let's do it. You know? <laughs> and, and so that, that thing of, of a kid being able to think philanthropically, you know, everything that gets the kids in a frame of mind that allows them to think more inspirationally, I think is, is part of, of what you need. And one of the reasons this class is so different is because it has to be so as not to fall into the trap of, it's another thing for which I'm getting a grade. Right, because the the abstraction of grades gets in the honestly gets in the way of a lot of learning. Right, I'm I'm not saying that grades are all bad. What I'm saying is that that how we talk about them and how we treat them get in the way of often people being excited about what they're learning. Um, I have a question around just uh, age groups. Like you are obviously in, in teaching it to high school, but I'm curious if there's uh, something where you find there's a sweet spot for age of interest because I have young kids and sometimes they're not interested and, and other times they're super interested and I'm curious about what age you find sweet spots and what age you're like uh they're distracted it might be personality based too yeah. What age is it? yeah so so 
that has to do with adaption, right? So, so taking the ideas and adapting them effectively. My nonprofit, Next Vista for Learning, nextvista.org, right? Uh, visit it. Is is a, a thing that does these these annual service contests, uh, service via video. Club members know because I, I will often put out a thing that says, hey, help us judge the, the, the winners, blah, blah, blah. And uh, what, one of my favorites from, from this contest is a, an art teacher from greater Chicago area, right, in Illinois, uh, who with her kindergarten and first grade class, so it's a bunch of K-1 kiddos, right? Um, and they did a thing where they made what they call heart houses. And, and so what they did was, you know, they, they, they learned to like color these things and, and add this on it. And then that seals it in and that can become an ornament and you sell the ornament for $5. And why are they selling the ornament for $5? Because they were raising money for, for kids at, at a school that had been like uh, beat down something fierce by Superstorm Sandy some, some years ago, right? Up in the Northeast. And, and so, so that kind of project might be something that for the youngest kids has to be teacher initiated. But it still means that, that what the kids are experiencing, it breaks a certain predictability. When kids say school is boring, what, what they're really doing is showing their lack of vocabulary. What they mean is that school is predictable. They just kind of know what's coming. And so, so a teacher who can say, so I've got something I'm going to show you here in a minute. But uh, first, I'm curious if you happen to know anything about this. Maybe I should show you. No, not yet. You know, I mean, you know, like <laughs> there are certain things you can do to make kids go, wait, wait, what, what's, what's coming? Wait, what is it? And, and so the goal is to create something that's just different enough, uh, not to freak them out, but to have them intrigued and then to spend time getting into it enough that the kids themselves will remember it, right? Because really what we're looking for is memorable learning. So something like the experience of making the hard houses in that K-1 art class is something they'll remember, right? The project that they're doing in, in our Creative Solutions class, they'll remember. And, and there are lots of things like this happening in schools, but whether the stories are being told is, is a totally different issue and, and a part of something that I talk about quite a bit. But there you go. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everyone. I think that concludes our time for Q&A. Do we have a closer? Yeah. So, so we always we always close our meetings this way, right? And and I'll and I'll jump, even though I was a speaker, I'll jump in and, and, and do this. God, that guy, right? That is this. If you are joining us as a as a guest, so you are watching this recording the week that this recording is our anchoring program for the club, uh, and you're like, hey, I I missed a recent meeting, and I'm trying to keep like a hundred percent attendance, which is a great thing to do because it kind of keeps you like going with your like rotary energy and inspiration. You don't have to do it, but it's a great thing to do. And it's so easy with us, right? Anyway, having said that, all you need to do is, is go a little bit farther down the page where this, this video is embedded and you'll see, uh, you'll see the attendance thing. And so you would put in, put in your name and if you successfully type in your email address, it'll generate an email that you can turn around to your club secretary in order to make up that miss and be a 100% attender like Shags, right? You know, and, 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 and I mean, that's, that's just a good way to be. Go down a little farther on the page and you will find our discuss section, the forum where we share ideas. Anything that you know kind of comes to mind about this, uh, you know, this presentation or anything else you saw in the meeting, let us know. Be like, hey, you know, blah 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 blah. Or you might see that somebody left a message. Spiatko, first one to watch most programs, right? You know, so right there at the bottom, and you can be like, hey, Spiatko, I was curious about this thing that you said in your comment. Do it. Right? That's one of the ways that we connect in an asynchronous club, right? Uh, so, so all of that is a part of what we encourage for our, our, our guests, members. You should be leaving comments too, because that's how we connect. Otherwise, you get in that thing where you're like, oh, I'm in the club, but I mostly watch programs. So many cool people in this club. Why would, why would you limit yourself that way? Just, just saying. And as we always like to do, we hand it back to our speaker for the final word. Oh, that's me. Um, so guys, as it turns out, we are, we are in this club, all right, in this organization, Rotary, which, which regularly inspires us to see new possibilities for the world locally, globally, and digitally. Get involved, right? You know, like, do this stuff. Be, be that like, hey, I, I want to help with the programs. I want to help with the membership committee. I want to help with what we're doing, you know, with our mini grants and our foundation stuff. I, I, I want to figure out how I can help. I'm not even sure. Email Alexandra, she'll tell you how. She, she knows exactly how this can happen. And, and that, that's fun. It is 
fun to do this. If you get an email and it's like, hey, connect with somebody with Coffee with a Rotarian, make sure to do it. Don't ignore that email. we got all these cool people. I mean, you know, life's too short not to like spend time with cool people, right? So, so there is that. And, and so finally, I would just say uh, the thing that I say at the end of a, a lot of talks that I give, which, which hopefully will be a, a perfectly good way of finishing the meeting, and that's this. May you inspire and be inspired each and every day. Thanks for coming in. Yay. And so, oh, I need to be the one to pause the recording. There you go. Guys, take care. See you next week. <laughs>